Yeah, Mom, I'm, now's not a good time, but, you know, I'm really glad you're all here tonight because they say it's important to confront a problem surrounded by friends. Not, not that I have a problem. I, I could quit any time I want. But I'm, I'd like to make a confession here and say, hello, I'm Sterling White, an information designer at Wall Street On Demand. And I'm addicted to beautiful data. So how do we communicate? Well, in a lot of ways, really. Our attention economy has created a lot of information and possibly caused too much confusion. In the end, we can use beauty as a way to cut through the clutter. But what is beauty? Now, I tried to think of words, but none really came to mind. So is it a girl holding a balloon or a sunset? In the end, beauty is a standard of communication. Data. It isn't just numbers, but it is always a set of information that's trying to tell us something. And in that, data is also a form of communication. See how that works? Beautiful data. You see, for as long as we've existed, we've used beautiful data to tell stories and create larger sociological myths. Let's look at a few examples throughout history. First, we told stories about the sun as a means to track time and become more productive farmers. And those grew into larger sociological myths that helped found our first civilizations. Time and agriculture, this is beautiful data. Then we went places, but we needed a canvas of information to tell stories on. So we thought, hey, stars are a canvas. Constellations, this too is beautiful data. Then one William Playfair comes along and, and combines these two elements to create charts like this of Napoleon's march towards Moscow. Charts are also beautiful data, but not always. <laughs> Excel. You see, it's not that I have anything against Excel, of course. It's, 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 it's great for figuring out two standard deviations from a mean. But Excel charts are not beautiful data. Why? Because they don't tell a story. So let's look at a couple of ways of how we use beautiful data today to tell the stories of today. <laughs> Kindly take the wrist of someone next to you and feel their pulse. There's a, there's a wonderful process that's going on there, but without visual data like EKGs, we're not able to understand the beautiful rhythms that are taking place day after day. Financial information has always been a welcome challenge to designers because of its complexity and its uh, scope. But what if we started to visualize the markets through nature? <laughs> X and Y axes are not optimal platforms for visualizing uh, different stories, but what if we could interact with, play with, and move around the markets? Would traders start to be behave differently? Nope. <laughs> so that's a two-minute history and a few examples, but let's take a look at a couple of ways of how you can start using data tomorrow to tell your own stories. Information is everywhere and is fairly important in things like recipes. But what if we started to look at our uh, ingredients through a kind of data process? Would we start to appreciate our food more? Resumes, can someone say snooze fest? <laughs> I've seen a lot of resumes. And I'm always disappointed because there's so much interesting data there, like time, place, and degrees of specialization. But, Let's say you have something really, really important to count, like your eight maids of milking, seven swans of swimming, six geese a lane, five golden rings. The rules. Focus on simplicity. Know your audience. And know your data. But don't get so caught up in the data that you lose sight of the story that you want to tell. 
Wall Street On Demand hosts a monthly design contest, and this month we're asking you to show us how you use data to make a more interesting life. So thank you so much. <laughs>